So, picking up where we left off a moment, a moment ago, we need to expand on our correlation table here and try to estimate the relationship between a categorical variable and a numeric variable, which we couldn't do with our correlations. In addition, we not only want to measure the effect of, of region on, on some numeric variable, but also test uh, and capture a p-value, which indicates the likelihood that that relationship happened due to chance or whether there truly is a relationship um, as we measured it uh, that exists between two variables. So, to do an ANOVA, we, we're going to do, sorry, we're going to do a one-way um, analysis of variance. And in order to do this, the data has to be in a slightly different format. So remember when we created uh, our box and whisker plots earlier on in this chapter, we had to take a variable, a categorical variable, and we grabbed a unique value of each categorical of each category in that variable variable excuse me and then we grabbed the data for the other variable we wanted to compare across categories so we looked at the effect of or the uh, box and whisker plot of um, occupation and the incomes across various occupations so this is the same format that it needs to be in for an ANOVA um, because once again we're dealing with something categorical Let's do something else in addition to this one. I want you to go back to our numeric data this time. And for each region, let's look at uh, sales, whether or not they purchased a bike. So sort by region, A to Z. And let's start with Europe. Shift, and uh, let's page down until we get through all of Europe. And grab the data for all of our European customers. Copy, come over here to sheet one, paste, label this one as Europe, and I'm going to rename this sheet now to our uh, categorical tab because this is where we've been analyzing categorical variables. So we also have North America and Pacific are our other two regions. So let's grab the data for those. Move original out of the way a bit. Uh, so here's North America, shift, page down. And we keep going forever until we finally, here we go, we get to Pacific. Copy, paste, and then Pacific, that one's easier, control shift down arrow because that's the last, and paste. So let's start by seeing whether people in Europe, North America, Pacific, are more likely to purchase bikes. Now, let's make sure we put this in the proper sp perspective. Um, what does our data here represent? This, my point is this isn't the total population of these countries by any means, nor are these simply random people selected that live in these countries. Our data here, each row, represents a person who came into one of our bike shops that we were able to somehow grab and survey before they left the store. So what I want to find out is, do we do a better job of converting people who walk into our store into sales, depending on which region we're in? So, back here on the Categorical tab, go once again to your Data tab, Data Analysis, and this time we're going to select a single factor ANOVA. Notice there are many types of ANOVAs uh, that we can do. And you'll learn all about you'll learn all about these in your stats class at some point. For now, we're just going to do a single factor ANOVA. So our input range is going to be all of this data, and you're going to have to make sure that you go all the way down. I hit Control A by the way to do this. You want to select to the lowest possible column, even though it's going to include some white space for these other two variables. That's not a problem. Excel will know what to do. So make sure you check labels in the first row. Alpha 0.05 simply means that our p-value is going to be based on uh, uh, this 0.05 significance level. Click on output range, and once again, don't forget, don't simply click on a cell or it's going to overwrite what we have here in input, input range. So it's a stupid user interface design, but when I click output range, it didn't automatically move my cursor down here. So click on that text box, and let's put this right here in K2. So once again, my input range, if you put everything in the same cells I did, then I've got G1 to I1, uh, sorry, I509, and then output range K2. Hit OK. Here's our ANOVA. 
I'm not going to teach you or cover everything in these tables, but I want to point you out a few specific things. First of all, notice our average. This is our average value for the different groups. So rather than giving us a slope, like we got before with uh, the correlation or with the scatter plot trend line, all it can do is say, here's the average you get for each one of these regions. What this means is that 49% of Europeans who came into the store purchased a bike. 43 cent of North Americans and almost 60 percent of, of those in the Pacific. So we think, cool, all right, clearly either our Pacific manager is better at teaching sales techniques or the people who live in that region simply like our style of, bo of bikes uh, more than other countries. There's lots of explanations for why this could be. The data doesn't tell us why this is. It's simply going to tell us if the difference between those countries is statistically significant, meaning is it, how likely is it that these differences occur to chance? Because if they occur to chance, then next year it could be that North America is 58% and Europe's 43%. It could totally change. But if it's not due to chance, if there really is an effect of region on the average um, conversion rate, then we should expect similar results next year if nothing changes. That's what it means to be statistically significant. The way we interpret that is looking down here at this p-value. Okay, our p-value is less than 0 0.05. The threshold, remember, for something to be called statistically significant is a p-value of 0 0.05. And if it's less than that, then we're going to say that it is not likely these differences were due to chance and there truly is some effect of the region they live in on how good they are at converting customers into sales. So, in particular, we can interpret this 0 0.001. That means there's a 0.1% chance uh, that these differences occurred due to chance. So, that's what ANOVA does for us. It handles categorical variables and it tells us uh, the statistical significance of the relationship between a categorical variable and some numeric variable. However, I should point out one more thing, one important caveat. This p-value, it doesn't say that the specific difference between North America and Europe is statistically significant. It doesn't say that the difference between Europe and Pacific was statistically significant. All it says was that overall, among all possible values of the category, there is some difference. There are other tests called contrast, which we won't learn in this class, which we can use to compare specific values of a category. So all we can say from this is that there is at least a difference between the Pacific, the, the, sorry, between the largest and the smallest, but we don't know about the individual differences among categories.